Oh man, the Predator, twenty eighteen. <laughs> yeah, I could tell by your tone that uh, it's not gonna be. Good. <laughs> yeah, we we did Predator, we did Predator two, we did Predators last time. Now we're doing the Predator, um, which is uh direct. I can't remember if it was written by him, but directed by Shane Black, who funny enough oh. played Hawkins in the first Predator movie. It was written by Fred Decker, who I had to look this up because I was just like, what is the deal with this movie? And Fred Decker, one of his credits, is the writer on Monster Squad. Yes, which is like, I love that movie. I absolutely love it. It is, but this is the Monster Squad of Predator movies, I feel like. Yeah, so it, like, uh, I will, in its defense, I will say, I don't think it's as bad as like no. everyone on the internet makes it out to be. It's not that horrible. It's just not very good. It's, Ah, uh, like when I was wa I watched it in the theater, and I there comes a certain point. I've done it with other movies, like the Star Wars sequels and stuff, where it starts becoming not very good. So I try to ignore the story, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna look at it. I'm just gonna watch it. Uh, for you know, Predator just Killing. Just Game, yeah, it's just like if you just watch it for cool stuff, you know, and just try to ignore the fact that it makes no sense. But it's really hard when it seems like every three minutes there was just something that kind of pissed me off <laughs> and it's like okay just ignore it and try to like it and then it would just hit you with another one and and finally you know i honestly i don't know what they were thinking it's like it, it's like i think we mentioned it before it's like they overthought it it's like a predator story doesn't have to be complex it doesn't need that many freaking side characters in it and like they have like you know they have the the team of the you old know, military prisoner guys and they have the military guys and they have the military guys family. And then they have like a love interest and, and then they have the side thing where the kids got autism and he's being oh bullied God. at school. And it's like, Oh, like it's just like the story. The first movie was like, it was like eight guys in the jungle. That's it. And it was so well done. And now it's like going off in all these directions and subplots. And there's like a government agency after them. And, it feels like in some places it feels like they couldn't decide between whether they wanted to make a parody or an action movie. Like I, I remember at one point, like this is well for I mean, first of all, let me say the cast in this movie, top tier. Like they got Thomas Jane in there. They got um oh, what's his name? The 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 main government guy. I forget his name, but like he's a really good actor. Like just the cast in general. I love everybody that's on the cast in this. Um I think the writing is where this movie suffered the most. Even the direction, the the maybe the Predator mask wasn't as good as the previous ones, but like the it's the writing that it suffered at. But like it felt like they were trying to make a parody movie as well as an action movie, but they couldn't decide, and it's halfway in between both. Um, the part where I kind of was like, okay, this is this is not as serious as all that. So maybe my brain needs to unserious my, itself a little bit is um, the house, the house that uh, the Halloween trick or treating house that, that blew up when the kid's wearing the mask and he goes and he trick or treats at the house. And he's, and then the guy who like, first of all, what kind of asshole like throws a apple or throws something at a kid walking yeah. away from a house? But then, like, I noticed the number on the house is 420. And I was just like, okay, oh, all yeah. right. Because like, you'd have to build that house and put those numbers on there. And I was just like, okay, well, I don't know what kind of movie you're making here, but it's not an action predator movie. Yeah. And actually, you know, now that you, I just, like, uh, Frank, Frank Decker, is that his name? Fred Decker, yeah. Fred Decker. He directed Monster Squad, right? I think so. I, let me look it so up. I'm pretty you. sure that like Shane Black, his first credit was writing Monster Squad. No, so they basically so they did a switcheroo. I'm pretty sure. Let's see here. Monster Squad, written by Sh Shane Black, directed by Fred Decker. You're you're yeah. right. So now it's like they just switch one, but it just see it just seems like two buddies that are like, hey man, let's make this movie, and they're kind of both like, it was almost like it was too like. Like smart ass or something that like they thought they were too clever. It, it is the smart ass this movie ever, but it's not clever. And like the 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 scenes with the Looney Squad and they're like hanging out and interacting with each other is so cringe. This whole movie, the dialogue is very cringe. It's just like yeah, it's like they just thought they were funny and and the thing <laughs> is like like the characters in the first movie, if you really think about it, they are a little bit ridiculous. Like they're so macho, but 
they were they were believable on some level because they're not like tongue-in-cheek biting characters where i think these guys were supposed to be like tongue-in-cheek like they're military guys but they're crazy and the one guy shot himself and like it's like um, i could see the writing right like i can't just watch it and pretend it's real it's like i could just see it being written and it's a really good way of putting it i can see the writing like i can see someone writing this down but i mean the other parts like like the predator scenes were really good i thought like the idea of the super predator coming and hunting the lesser predator and this predator is here to like, I mean, they tried to tie in like ecological <laughs> disaster into it a little bit. And I was just like, okay, it's a little late in the movie to bring in your eco message movie. Like, and they yeah. didn't even give that much attention to it. Yeah. It's like, they were just trying to do too much. And like, and to be on, like, I know there's been stuff on the internet about how, you know, people with autism are like kind of pissed as to how they, it's like well, just because you have autism doesn't mean you're like a like a genius. Uh, well, this is long after that because I think it was Prison Break where like suddenly all these movies and TV shows after that started coming out where like if you had autism you had superpowers. Yeah. And you know what's funny is the first scene. This movie came out in 2018. First of all, Prison Break came out in 20, 2006. I think by 2010 that autism wave of movies had stopped. So I don't know what this movie was doing, but like. When they first introduce the kid and he gets bullied by the stereotypical bullies, I was like, this kind of sucks. This is lame. And then he he sets the chess pieces back together again. And I was like, oh, this is kind of an interesting way to show, like, he he doesn't interact with people, but he has this, like, if they hadn't put the bully part and somehow the, the, the chess pieces got, like, shook out of place or something, and then he put it back together, I would have been like, this is a very interesting scene to, like, show this how this person operates without like really saying anything and then the second this little son of a bitch opens his mouth i think it's the next scene where he talks and i'm just like get him out of here yeah Yeah, like why is he even in the movie and the thing is like i'll say right now i hate scenes with bullies like every single movie that has a kid at school has them getting bullied it's just like it's like an artificial way to create drama uh, that doesn't really affect the rest of the story for the most part. Oh, he's and getting he, bullied. It's and another one is kind of like you know the guy, main character goes to a bar and then you know some assholes try to pick a bar fight. Picking on him, yeah. Like you, you can't do. But even, honestly, why is any of the family stuff even in this movie? Like even in, I, in, yeah. in Predator <laughs> Two, like you never saw um, Danny Glover's character go home and he's got a problem. And he's with got his wife, wife and kids, kids, kids that you like never even riddle. saw. It. You never even mentioned it. I don't. It's just like here's him doing his job so here we got military guys and all this stuff and it's like let's take time away to delve into this freaking little kid's story that i the fact that the little kid with autism figures out the like predator helmet and the predator band is just like come on (laughs) (laughs) and then and then he like wears it out like it it just i don't know yeah it just doesn't make sense and yeah the whole thing with the guy like yeah there's no one who's big enough asshole who's just going to be drunk and then like throw shit at a little kid. Not to mention then the kid like just murders him in cold blood and they brush this, it this off. Guy's dead like, now. We don't even know what happened to him. His house is blown up. He's gone. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I could just see like when they were like, especially in that, the bus, you know, scene where they first meet all the guys and guys, you know, Keegan, Michael key, like they are hilarious There's, guys. It's such a but, good, like Thomas Jane is so good. I'm so sad he has to do stuff like this. And I could just see the writers, like when they were working on that, they probably just like, they're just writing and they're like, oh man, like I'm so freaking good at this, man. I'm so smart. How many pussy jokes can we get uh, Michael uh, Key to say? How? Uh, (laughs) And the thing is like, some of them were funny if it was like in a meme or something. It's like, okay, but to put it in a movie and that's supposed to like build his character, like. It's just like, oh, uh, like, yeah, it's so crazy. The person at the typewriter writing the lines as they speak them. Like, the actors are trying as hard as they can to convey the lines. And, like, the guy who, um, I forget his name, but he was on Liv- in Living Color um, back in the day. But he he's the main, like, bad military guy that, like, the guy chews the gum. He's so charismatic and he does such a good job with those terrible lines. Like, he delivers them so well. He's probably my favorite guy in it. <laughs> oh, man. That's because he's just doing such a good job with whatever dreck yeah. they gave him. It's almost like they gave everyone, like, too much character. It's like, let's yes. just 
like I kind of do that in horror show, but I did it as like a joke to make it like a ridiculously bad well, slasher movie. It wasn't supposed to be real. I wouldn't do that in a movie that was supposed to be real. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying. I I I feel like they were confused between whether they're trying to make a Monster Squad, a Predator movie, or a parody of Monster Squad and Par and Predator. Yeah, it's like it worked for Monster Squad, but like it's like Predator. You could have some fun with it because you, you can. It's more cartoony. But on some level, it has to be a little bit serious because you know you're about people being hunted. There's got to be suspense. There's it violence. It can't be self-aware. If you're gonna go like the extra muscles man route and you're gonna like shoot machine guns, you can't be self-aware. You gotta bring it down so that like it's less clever. I, I mean, I hate to say that, but like it needs to be less clever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And honestly, like Prey, the next one that we'll review probably next time. They don't really do that. Like they get back to, they at least take it seriously. I mean, say what you want about the movie, but at least they took the movie seriously. Where this one, it's, it's like every joke is like, oh, groan, eye roll. Like, I wonder if this was like the 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 what what did you call it? like the apex where they like made it bigger, made it bigger, made it bigger, and then they went too big and everything blew up, and they were like, oh shit, we need to go back to basics. Now. Yeah, that's probably that seems like what is what happened and. Well, and, I noticed yeah, like they basically just pulled the plug on it. It kind of ended with like, oh, they got that predator suit. This is gonna lead somewhere cool. But then everyone's like, this movie sucks. So they're like, all right, fuck this. We're gonna like you gotta <laughs> go back. Change change direction. And it like you know, they well, had like predator own... dogs in there. Like they just they just like threw everything into the movie. Like oh, well, they fucked up their own timeline too, I think, in the movie, because like the guy says they've been tracking them since 1987 and then again in 1997. And like the movie came out in 1987, but then the second one came out in 1990, and I don't think it said 1997. It did. It did say 97. Yeah. Oh, it did. Okay, it is said yeah. 97. Okay, so yeah. that that that's part two took place in the future. So I guess yeah. they, they get that detail right. They they got that detail right at the very least, and I mean they had like the get to the chopper line, and I was like, okay, all right, yeah. fine. <laughs> but even honestly, even just the whole opening, you know parts where the guy finds the like the ball or whatever that thing you know makes him like invisible and and then he's trying to like mail it home and like there's this i don't know it just like they, they should have just like skipped all that got right to it like there's so many parts that yeah oh here's the thing at school it's like come on get on with it the only like, i think if you're gonna do a predator marathon this movie wouldn't work is great but if you're gonna do like a monster squad and then, like, I'm trying to think of other movies around that. Like, if you if you're doing like a, a funny monster movie, this movie would fit in perfectly in that marathon. Yeah, like if it's a standalone film, this type of like style could work. But you're in the fourth part of a popular beloved series. It's like you got to kind of take it take it seriously because you do have fans oh, yeah. that that love this kind of thing. Well, you got to respect the stuff that came before you. You can't be like, well, all that stuff that came before, that was crap. We need to be clever and funny and make fun of the previous stuff a little bit. Yeah. You got to respect it and be like, this is what they set up. And this is how I, I got followed up with something that's like better in that tradition, not like better of making fun of it. And I don't know if that was their intention, like the writer or the director. Like I would assume it's not. I don't think they were. Tr I don't think they were trying to like mock it. I think, I think they just kind of got high on their own, you know, writing yeah. skills. And they're just like, man, I can think of the funniest stuff. And not every like I noticed even Star Wars started doing that. It's like a modern Hollywood thing where every line has to be like kind of funny, like sarcastic. Marvel that does that right, and it kind of like especially when you're in a serious scene where there's like fighting going on, like lives are at stake. And every joke is like every line is some sort of like wisecrack. It doesn't sound <laughs> real. It just sounds like dialogue. It just sounds like a writer trying to be it, funny, throwing in funny lines, and it doesn't work in a serious movie. No. But like again, I did like the Predator parts of it. I thought the Predator costume wasn't as good as the previous two movies, which is funny because they're like so far apart. But like, eh, the Predator costumes weren't as good. But like. The storyline of the first one crashing and trying to like bring us some technology to defeat the bigger one and the bigger one coming to I start to get into it when that stuff really started picking up. I was like, I'm into this now. Yeah, there's yeah, there's parts like yeah, you know, like in the theater, I was just trying to ignore all everything except just watching the predator shoot people. And it's like if you take it at that level, yeah, there's there's some cool parts in it. Like it's not 
like I don't think anything about it was like it was well performed. It was well shot. You know, it's like they yeah. had some cool stuff. It's just all the extra stuff they threw in there that it just kind of like it took it. It just kind of went off the rails somehow. And it's like I think there's like a this um theory in Hollywood. They kind of did it with a Die Hard series where you know the first one was like one guy in a building and it was cool. But as it goes on, it's like you know what he needs a sidekick. He it needs, like, to it needs to be bigger. He needs to have more and more and more stuff thrown in there. He needs to have his son with him, and and then it's more like, opportunities for merchandising. Yeah, and it just kind of like there's too much in there now, and you kind of miss it. The earlier ones were same thing with Indiana Jones, right? It's like it started with just the hero and a story, and now there's like you know a woman and a kid involved and uh, it's just like this have you seen the much. new one down destiny i haven't seen it yet but like i'm trying to decide if i want to see it yeah it's honestly it's like every other movie that comes out now it's okay i Fair enough. can't even really remember it, it like by the time i left ah, the theater, okay. it's uh oh well. yeah uh I just... this one though i think i think this is my definition of an average movie like in order to rate it i would give it a five i would say this is my like it's not so bad that i'm gonna walk out of the theater the only movie where i've walked out of the theater was abraham lincoln vampire hunter like i just did not like the movie i loved the book so much i i walked out of the so i'd give that like a four or five or three but this one it's yeah it's not so bad that i walk out of the theater but it's not so good that i'd tell people to watch it i'd, I'd give it yeah. a solid five I'd have to agree. I know there's like a lot of hatred online where they just like rip it apart. It's not that bad. It's just and it's I almost can, worse. it keeps like, my it's worse to be and I get into it. Yeah. It's whatever. I'm not mad that I watched it, but I'm just kind of like, man, could have done better. But if you think about it, like, you know, now we have like five or more whatever predator movies to watch. If you watched them as they came out like you're waiting like a decade or more for the next one to come out so if you're a big fan all of a sudden it comes out and it's like oh man now we got i gotta wait like another 10 years for the next one like it's kind God of like knows what they'll do. <laughs> um but it's like yeah it's not that bad it's just like it's just one of those things it's just like they can never get it right anymore like it in hollywood it just seems like everything they try with any sort of well-known property just never like, can you think of anything where, like, the, where the newest one is the best of the series? I'm trying to think if I've <laughs> seen anything. Yeah, like nothing recent. Like... Whereas, if you were in like the 80s or 90s or even 2000s, a lot of the times, like, I think the third uh, Indiana Jones is the best one. Like when that came yeah, out, no, yeah, no, they ended on a good note, on. and then they made two more, and they're not as good. And <laughs> it's like they somehow it's like they've lost their touch, and yeah, I don't. Know. I don't know how to solve the problems. I guess all we can do is make our own stuff uh, the way we see fit and not call Although, you know, the Ghostbusters franchise, like, I didn't like the first remake they did, but then Afterlife, I think it was, that was quite good. I did enjoy that. The one they shot in Sundry? Yeah, I I thought it was good. Yeah, same, like, yeah, that 2016, I couldn't even finish it. Like, yeah. I, I wanted to like it, but I freaking hated no, it. No, no, that was not great. It was basically a remake of the first one. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. like, they were, like, yeah, they... They didn't take it seriously. Like it was just, yeah, it was just bad jokes. But yeah, after like, it was pretty good. I haven't seen the, the the Frozen Empire. Same. I haven't seen the newer one yet, but I do want to see it because, like, I thought they were doing good so far. So I was like, all right, this yeah. next one, right? It's probably going to be an instance of like it's not what it used to be and never will. But taken on its own merit, it's pretty. It's pretty decent. Like, I, I liked Afterlife. It's pretty cool. Okay, great. Well, it's great talking to you again. So I guess next time uh, you want to do Prey next. Yeah, yeah, let's do. I'm excited to watch Prey. I, 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 I've watched it before. I, I, I'm not going to give away my opinion. You could probably guess, but I'm excited to watch it again. All right, let's do it. All right, bye everyone. We'll see you next time. All right, take it easy. Mm -hmm.